Attending to honeybees for the first time when you have no beekeeping experience can be very intimidating. Worst case, they die. You try to build up your knowledge and skills and theory, but when it comes to having them in front of you, it's a whole other story. You will make mistakes and you will have to adapt your beekeeping style by using your judgment and logic. In this video, I will share the whole process of my year as a first time beekeeper. Some good, some bad, and a whole lot of learning. And by all means, don't expect me to have all the right terms of an experienced beekeeper. I will share this from my perspective as a total newbie I am. I do, however, have to thank my local mentor, Jean-Sébastien and Kaylee from The Honeystead for lending a helping hand when I was feeling a little insecure and needed help with certain things. Your mentor has been doing it for a little while. I don't think it would hurt to do it his, her, his or her way. Yeah. I will start this out by showing the very beginning. So here's my day one of my beekeeping experience. We had ordered two nukes, which are two baby hives composed of four frames, a queen bee, some brood, and some honey. A bigger beekeeper had previously split some hives, and this is the result of that split. From what I understood was not to expect too much honey from these guys, as they need to build up their honeycombs in order to make room for the queen to lay her eggs and build up the colony. We were pleasantly surprised by the results given by the end, which I will share with you a little bit later in this video. Installing the nukes, Zone 3, Quebec, Canada. First of all, we had to decide an area to place the nukes where they would be protected from the dominant winds with a south-facing entranceway. Also, if you live in a cold climate like mine, a place where the snow accumulation is abundant to insulate them in the wintertime. I realized later that the place where I chose was not very user friendly. You'll see when it comes time to harvest. My mentor came out to help us set up these bees in these two straightforward 10 frame Langstroth hives. I got a very intense crash course that day on how to properly put on my bee suit to lighting the smoker and identifying the different frames in the hive that consists of brood, which is the queen's eggs and babies, the drones, the bigger male bees, and the worky bees. As the baby hive had four frames, my mentor advised us to add in two empty frames for them to work on. And in order for them to concentrate on filling those frames up, we needed to fill in the empty space so that they wouldn't build natural frames in those spots. We gathered some three inch styrofoam and placed them in the extremities of the hive so that the colony could work towards the inside. Day one was pretty straightforward. We let them be for about seven full days without disturbing and gave them some sugar water Water, a one-to-one -one ratio to give them a little boost. After seven days, I came back and added two more empty frames for them to work on as the bees were building and building fast. So now each hive has eight full frames out of 10 and on the extremities, there was no more room to put in the three inch styrofoams. That is where I made my first mistake. When I came in for the second inspection, I took the decision to leave the space empty, thinking I could make it back out to the hive in the next seven days. Well, the rain and the wind picked up, and I was only able to go inspect the hive 11 days later. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm nice. Don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. I just need to make sure that you guys are okay. Uh-oh, I got one coming up on me. They are a good amount of, they're producing a good amount of wax here. So I have to come and scrape it. Came back to the hive and they had filled up those spaces with almost a full built honeycomb, filling up all the empty space. This one was what truly broke my heart. It was filled with baby bees. As I lifted the cover, I destroyed the whole thing and it fell to the bottom of the hive. Moral of the story, don't ever leave space in the hive because they prefer to build on nothing than build on a man-made frame. All right, so these bees created a whole comb that I have to remove and it kind of sucks because there's a whole bunch of larvae in there, but I absolutely have to do it. Uh, 
The reason why we did this was because we created a spacing for them in the beginning and when we came back, oh my gosh, there's so many of them. I am so scared to hurt these. They, uh, they ended up filling up the spaces, so it's a newbie error. It feels so horrible to destroy it. I do not see a queen in here but I feel like they are mad. Called up my mentor and he said, just put them on the side of the hive, making sure that if there's syrup in it, not to place it between both of the hives to prevent the other hive from robbing the honey, because that would be very catastrophic in, in the process. So I proceeded on removing all the comb and placed them on the respective sides of each colony. I then filled up the space with new frames. So now there were a full 10 frames, but I felt so horrible after that one. That was kind of sad because this colony wasn't thriving very well and I had to destroy everything that they had created. And they worked so hard for like 10 days to create all this comb. And in one colony, there was a beautiful amount of larvae in there that I had to come in and remove, which was really sad. What I'm gonna do is gonna come check in these hives. They were trying to create a new queen. Actually, they're trying to create like five new queens. I took away three of them and I let two of them just go natural. So hopefully I have a new queen in here that I'll be able to find and hopefully she's laying by now because this colony was not doing so hot. I'm gonna go ahead and open her up. Oh wow, okay, yeah, they are doing so much better than the last time. I think that they grew, so that is nice. I'm gonna set this in front of the hive. I'm gonna come smoke them, and I'm gonna come inspect. I'm coming, girls. I hate working with gloves already. This one looks a lot more filled. What I'm looking for right now is eggs and larvae. It's so weird being a beekeeper when you've never done this before. It's a little stressful. Looks like they're capping honey in this one. They're very nice, they're not aggressive, not an aggressive colony at all. And they're creating more comb on this one, more syrup. All right, I saw the queen, so I know she's here. Here she is, do you see her? How big she is, she's trying to hide. So there is the new queen. She's just like, you're not gonna get me. <laughs> she's moving very fast, holy moly. I lost her already. But it's a very good sign that I saw her. She's not very big, so I don't know if she's got babies and her eggs in her belly. It's the first time I get to see a queen in this colony. So they are hard at work. I'm gonna let them work and do their thing. I'm hopeful for this colony. Oh yeah, I see some, some baby larvae in here, so that's good. I'm very happy to see that. All right, so this one on the other hand, they're thriving. Like I had to give them a second, a second box because they were on the verge of trying to leave. <laughs> I'm very, very curious to see what's happening underneath this one. So I'm going to bring the camera. I just put it on here like, I don't know, what, a week ago? So I'm very curious to see what they've been up to on the second top of this hive. Wow. You guys are already building your second top. They're very fast builders. These, this hive, all already constructed, wow. Okay, and that's just, this is my ninth day. I'm actually a little late for the inspection for this one because the weather wasn't being too nice with me. So, oh. There's my mic. My mic just sat down on the beehive. Probably hear a lot of bees. Move, bees. Get out the way. Get out the way, bees. Get out the way. 
check on the other side, check on the belly. This is gonna be heavy. Well, I run out of battery before I see the queen, like last time. We shall see, we shall see. Wow, it's so hard to, to film when you're doing bee stuff because your hands are just so full. Capped brood, right? I think that's capped brood. I see one with pollen right there. Where are you going? Are you going to feed the queen? Tell me. Let me know. Let me know your secrets. So this colony has not built any royal cells since I've got them. I thought that was a cool fact. I see her every time. She's so big. But not this time yet. These are so fascinating. I never thought I would like doing this so much because for when I'm sort of allergic to them. And they're insects, like, you know, insects. <laughs> Who likes playing with insects all day? I have enough pests in my garden, but I turned out to really like these guys. They, I, they grew on me. Okay, next one. Okay, lots. Lots, lots of larvae in here. I wonder if I could show you on camera just how much larvas inside the cells. Like you can see sort of white, like a big piece of rice. That's, that's what the larva looks like, which I thought was interesting because in the beginning I was like, okay, holes, holes, holes. See here in the darker, I don't know if you see that, but there's a whole bunch in there too. Some baby bees. You see the difference, they're so small. I have to remove a lot of stuff here. It looks like a beginning of royal cell, but I'm not sure. When I'm not sure, I remove it because I love this queen. I wouldn't want her to have to fight against another one since she's doing such a great job. I think the recording stopped, but I have not seen the queen yet. And I literally spent way too much time searching. <laughs> I'm getting really, really hot right now. I'm not the hot I kind of want to be right now. <laughs> so my friend told me that if in the extremities She's, there's ready to lay, like, you know, that good comb that the queen lays in, to put them in the middle, because the queen likes to stay in the middle and lay there. Oh, this one's heavy. Oh, gosh, okay. You're so heavy. This is full of syrup. Full of syrup, holy moly. Okay, yep, definitely not gonna be laying in there. So no sign of the queen today, but I know that the queen is there because there is larvae, so I'm not worried about it. I'm moving these guys back. Hardest part of this whole process is gonna have to, gonna be to put the whole hive back on. Okay, okay. This is heavy. I would not see Ben doing this. That's how heavy it is. We're gonna need a horizontal hive for Ben later. I'm at the front of the hives right now just to take a thumbnail. You're not too happy with me? Because I'm right at their entrance point. <laughs> but I wanted you guys to see me. Oh gosh, last time I came out here, I had to clean out my whole bee suit because it was disgusting. And man, are they not easy to wash. I'm glad today went a little smoother for the inspection. I really was worried that the first hive wasn't going to be like able to take that hit that I took from them because I took, I removed like so many days of work of calm, natural, natural calm. 
that they had built and I felt so horrible. But it looks like they made it. Yeah, I just I just finished. Oh. Ben's like all worried about me. I was just explaining to everybody that I got to see the queen in this one. Yeah. They are expanding. She is laying. So yeah. everything's doing good. Just pick up my stuff and skedaddle. Oh, man. See ya. So pr to prevent this, uh, the smoke to be really, really hot, because it sort of does get hot, my uh, beekeeper friend actually gave me a trick, and it's to put some grass on it. So I'm gonna do that. Some grass in here. And so it actually filters through the heat a little bit, so it's nice. I'm still getting used to, uh, you know, bees and I'm not sure if I'm allergic to them yet, so I'd rather wear a suit to start and just to get used to them. So this is the hive that isn't doing so hot that I had to hatch out a new queen. And so we're gonna see if I open it up and it's pretty busy in there. I'm really excited to know. Colony grew very well. So this new queen is probably doing her job a lot better. <laughs> well, obviously she is. I'm just blowing it in there so that they know that I'm coming. When you blow, they move away from it. So it's nice. I've not spotted any eggs yet, but I can definitely see that the colony has grown, so. I know something's happening. Is one hatching. It's hard for me to show you, but one hatching right there. Over the queen. I'm just gonna put this in the same order. Oh, I see a royal cell. I'm gonna come remove it. All right, so they still have room to grow. I'm gonna come back in a few, maximum seven days and just make sure that. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna sign up the queen. All right, let me put you back. So that was an interesting colony. Uh, didn't see the queen. I saw a little bit of eggs and some larvae, so I saw some hatching actually, so that's pretty nice. It's very, very good to see. So I'm gonna go open up the second one now. It's their turn. I'm gonna check the top first. It's gonna be at my height. It's gonna be nice. Oh, they're already filling up the top pretty nice, to, you know, compared to the other one. I'm gonna set this in front of the hive at the entrance. There's not too many of them. I don't feel the need that I have to smoke them. You definitely tell just by looking at this hive that there's a lot more action going on right now with them. They're building so well. I put a second one on these ones, actually two inspections ago. They're just growing. They have such a beautiful pattern, this hive. Compared to the other one, they're just like, the other one's more like sporadic, but these ones here do an amazing job. Really nice. Okay. So the queen has made her way up. A lot of laying going on here. Beautiful. She's busy, very busy queen. So I could see her anywhere, up here or down there. I'm not really, um, like I don't really care for the honey production this year. I just really want my colony to be strong. 
So that's why I decided to not put the the queen stopper between the hives. So I'm going to take this hive off, check the bottom. Okay. You're right on top of the other hive right now. So we're gonna see how these guys are doing on the bottom. I don't see myself having more than two hives, sorry guys. I seriously do not because so far I've been the one inspecting these guys and this is Ben's job. <laughs> of course I ran out of battery. <laughs> Um, I did not see the queen in the second hive, but I am done. I put everything back on. I can now relax, breathe, take off my suit, because gosh, after inspecting both hives like that, whew, get hot. So I saw they still have some room to grow, which is nice. Um, I think that they should be good for another seven days. I'm going to keep an eye on them to make sure that there's no signs of wanting to leave the hive. Make sure I'm not going to step on any bees on the ground. Sometimes there are bees on the ground. Oh my gosh, this feels so good. Freedom! In both hives, they are looking very good. This one, of course, is just rocking. Their pattern, their building patterns are so much nicer and cleaner than the ones in the other hive, which is pretty cool to see. I'm very happy that they're both healthy. Now I just need to contact my bee guy to see what's next. You know, for the first colony that wasn't doing so good, what do I do now? Because I'm like, okay, everything looks good, but is it really? I don't know. It's a lot, a lot of learning. I have to grab all my stuff now. Oh, all right, so that was just a little peek of how everything is doing. Hope you enjoyed it. Drive the same roads every day. We both get there our own. This a land an apple tree How different two souls can be But we both grow from the same sorrow If we both know we'll be together tomorrow I can be like a tree in the wind Same old roots but I can bend Turning to understand Sway together. Now it's almost like a dance, rendering of stubbornness, and it just cuts us deeper through. I'm burning. So this technically is a story of how Mallory and Ben bought bees and how Ben realized how hard it is and he sort of feels bad that I'm the one taking care of it. So who knows for the future? We'll see how it goes. Ben would really love to do like experiments with bees and see if he can push the limits of our climate. A little bit like me and gardening, but him and bees. And I'm here just doing it conventionally. So, I don't know, Ben's got big plans. We'll see how it goes, because he really wants to, to get into it, but it's just too heavy for him right now. Horizontal hives might be a really good solution for him. We'll see.
so welcome to Go Back Homestead. I'm Mallory and this is my first time ever having bees and I have my dad with me helping me out, Jean, because Ben is out at the cabin and I have to try to figure this out <laughs> on my own <laughs> because this is really my first year of beekeeping. Here, I got it. I need to put it, it up. Okay, I got it. Here. Thank you. And last week when I came out here, I noticed full. Want me to scrape them off a little bit? Honey frames. Wow. Very, very full. This is all capped, right? Okay, yeah. And there's no brood, and there was no queen separator in here. So what I'm going to have to come do <laughs> is figure out a way how to remove all this honey without being bad with the bees, and I have to shake them back in here. So. What I think I'm, I might do is just remove the whole honey frame, put it aside, and then... What, what if we just... Uh, I'm, well, it's because this is the whole thing we have to bring back. Oh, this is what you need to bring back. Yeah, oh, okay. so what I want to do is make sure that I don't like bring the queen with us. Okay. Since there's no queen separator in here. She's most likely on the bottom, but I think I'm going to have to remove this whole thing first. Oh, you want to try it? Yeah. Okay, got it. Yes, yeah, so heavy. Heavy. Yeah. Okay, we got it. Got Are you it. sure? Yeah, it just uh, you know, the spot over there. Okay. So we're gonna go put it on the other one, right yeah. on top of the other one. Pretty good. So they're 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 like okay, they're trying to do something with the honey, so they're gonna try to suck the honey that's left out. So I'm going to try to move this a little further, maybe into the buggy. Do you want to go bring that into the buggy? Yeah. Somewhere, like try to put it standing up so that it, uh, like it is, and I put on and fall so it doesn't uncap the honey. Because we don't want to extract it today. Another fully capped honey frame. There's a lot more of them on this one. Over here? Yeah. I'm making sure that the queen isn't in here because that would be bad. There was no queen separator. And I have to do this today because it's going to be three days of a very, very cold weather. And I really want to be able to harvest the honey. Don't go through. Okay. Holy moly, that's a lot oh. of bees. <laughs> Not half on this side. Oh, there's a queen. Really? There she is. Okay, you see her? She's like a little bigger. Here, wait. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Go into the bottom. Huh? Okay, there you go. Yeah, I want that her one. to go into the bottom. Yeah. Go into the bottom, girl. There you go. Okay. Go in there. Yes, she's in. Okay, good. So we've seen her. So she was up here. So she was probably looking for a place to lay maybe. But this is all honey. So you're going to separate her and keep her in here, right? Yes. Okay. So I came back to get myself a feeder, right? This is to put the mason jar with the syrup in it, two to one ratio. And I turned my smoker back on and I, there are bees all over me. Like, it's crazy. They are just like not happy with me right now because this is the second time I'm gonna go into the hive. And I had also forgot the mite treatment. <laughs> so for the Varroa. So I need to remove some honey that isn't capped. And then I'm gonna have to come treat for Varroa. So that's what I need to do now. Kids are over at my neighbor's place. Thank goodness. I have great neighbors <laughs> because I'm all alone today. All right, so I'm gonna have to open up this other hive and remove all the honey and make sure that I leave enough in the bottom frame. I'm gonna put the feeder on right now. Might as well. Come on, girlies. Move out of the way. I have to take off with this box, girls. 
I'm so sorry. They're not gonna like me very much. Yep, they're not happy with me, huh? I'm so sorry, girls. Okay, gosh, I made it back. I'm gonna do the Varroa treatment right now. All right, I need to elaborate on this a little bit because my experience from retracting honey on these hives was such a mess. It was a disaster. And I wasn't able to film anything because I was like trying to chase bees away that were following me in the honey. And I went all the way into the garage and I locked the, the honey inside a room. There were bees everywhere. They had followed me. And so I tried smoking out the whole room. Like I was just about to get intoxicated. Like I was going crazy trying to smoke this whole bee, the whole bees out of this room to prevent them from trying to steal the honey back for me. Right. I was having such a hard time. <laughs> Anyways, so I ended up being able to smoke out a whole bunch of them and trying to breathe in there on the whole way. Next year, I'm going to have a different solution. I'm going to have like one of those bee chasers that you put on the hive a few days before so that you make sure that there's no more bees inside that box. So you can just remove the box and skedaddle and leave. Like I literally had to go frame per frame remove every frame, put them back in a box, and as soon as I put them back in, there were bees back on them as like as fast as they were off of them. So it was really, really hard. So what I did was I pretty much locked up the honey inside my, um, my garage in a, in a locked room. I just left that there for my, maybe a week before I was able to get an extractor. And you guys know that I went to get the extractor from my friends uh, Dar Darren and Brigitte from Thorhaven Farm. So that was nice of them to, to give that to us. And we ended up having 100 pounds of honey this year. And that was crazy. So what I did was my mentor told me to leave in four full honey frames in the bottom of each hive uh, on the extremities of where the, the hive brood is. So they were able to have that as a supplement for, for the winter time. They ended up eating through a bunch of that. And it, that was my mistake. I didn't give enough uh, feed in the fall time. So that was just another new mistake that I did. So they were going through the reserves that I had left for them. So I tried to feed as much as I could uh, from that moment on when I noticed the mistake. And then I also made them some bee candy, which I'm going to probably switch out to that footage right now. Seems like every video that I do, I'm getting dressed up more and more. <laughs> well, it's that time of the year. It's sort of uh, uh, melting back down, but there's frost all over the truck. See? It's that time! Hey, chickens! It's warming up with the sun, though, so it's really nice, actually. So I'm going to go get the horses out, and then I'm going to go check out what kind of insulation I have in my cold room. Because I do have... Um, my cold room isn't finished insulating and since I didn't use it for the cold room, I'm going to use it for the bees. It's like really thick, I think three inch insulation board, which will be very nice for them and cozy. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I dare you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I jumped a little, yes. <laughs> I wanted to put my legendary smile on, eh? Yes. Legendary. Okay, horses. Let's get you a horse hug. I need a horse hug too, though. Hug, hug. Hug, hug. Thank you. Good boy. Mm. For 
the bees. I watched, I actually binge watched Ariel from um, Good Simple Living, or not Good Simple Living, uh, Simple Living Alaska. Cause they have beehives out in zone three in Alaska. And we have a very similar climate. And what they did was they filled up a few pillowcases with some wood shavings, which I have here. And they put it on top of their hive for the winter. And what it's supposed to do is absorb the humidity. And since we are in a cold, you know, the, with the snow in our climate, it's very humid. And we don't want any condensation because a wet bee is a dead bee. So I'm gonna try this technique this year. I sort of built a contraption, very do-it-yourself contraption. I hope it's gonna work. I mentioned in my live stream last night that I'm a little scared for the bees because they're running low on food. They went through their reserves, their honey reserves. So I made them some uh, bee candy, I think it's called. So that's what I am going to be giving them. I made some yesterday, I laid it all out. It sort of looks like a cake like candy cake or something like that you guys will see anyways all right i'm at the bees they're not gonna like me for a few minutes here because it's gonna get really cold real fast okay here we go they're clustered here i'm gonna try to get them to go down here is the bee candy i'm gonna cut it up in little pieces right now actually because it was a little too big There's four pounds of sugar in each hive that I did. I had eight pounds of sugar left. I just took everything I had left. I was a little desperate. Please don't bite me. Oh, they're going on it right away. They're really enjoying this, I think. I really don't want to squish you. All right. I was able to do it. Now I'm going to put this sawdust over them. Get them some extra ventilation, probably from the back here. I'm gonna do it this way. So that way, you can have ventilation from the front and from the back. Okay, so that's step one. That was a little stressful, I'm not gonna lie. And then I'm gonna come in here and put a hive blocker. So they do have a hole here. Hopefully they're able to come in and out from this hole. I hope I made it big enough. This is wet, so it was about time for me to come do this. I'm really hoping that what I'm doing right now is going to pay off. I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little stressed out about, about winterizing these bees because I it's just, you know, it's the first time for me and I feel like they were running out of food. So, we'll see. Oh, you guys have a lot more bees. Holy, okay, I'm sorry guys, you have to go down. You do not want to get bit. Are you sticking in here? Oh gosh, I had to mad rush all the way back to the barn because I was getting swatted in the head and they were getting stuck in my hair. They weren't too happy with me. I didn't get the smoke, but I got my suit and my gloves because I'm sort of going in there with my hands. But look how beautiful they're doing. This hive is amazing. So I'm just gonna continue putting in their sugar a little bit by bit. Try not to squish them. I'm a little bit more clumsy with my gloves, so I'm just really going to try to do this as humanely as possible. Hi, B. Hi. Saying this, I'm a lot more confident than I was a few weeks ago. So, so as I said, I created these blocks just to make sure that they're not getting squished when I put this over it. Back in there. Good job. Fly away. Originally, I was gonna put them together so that they can generate more heat together, but I have three inch 
insulation boards so I don't think I don't think they're gonna have a hard time staying warm in here the bees didn't even eat this syrup that I made them this two-for-one uh, water sugar syrup so I'm I'm more confident than I was that's for sure I have to come in the basement to come get the insulation boards that I have in the uh, cold room so pretty soon we're gonna have to start heating with the wood because it's getting pretty cold we're all stocked we got 16 cores of wood in the basement here so I'm gonna go into the cold room whoa stepped on that let's see what I can work with in here all right as you guys see I have all my potatoes in the cold room here it's not finished insulating so I still have this part here to do uh, actually this part here to do um, it's kind of warm in here it's 11 degrees Celsius in here so I'm gonna have to finish up this place but yeah I got all these insulation boards that I can use left over I'm about shoes. to leave. You got my clean shoes Already on. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not pretty asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. I really have the worst habit of working with my clean clothes, and I forget that I have it on. And then my cl my clothes doesn't last very long. That's me. I'm gonna go bring this down to the hive and get a knife to be able to cut it to the right size on the spot. So I'll see you down there. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. I'm done living life with the lights out. Die with my own doubts. Be free with me. seem a little bit overkill to a whole bunch of you guys but honestly with the amount of food that I saw in here a couple weeks ago I was very very concerned about them I was even thinking about maybe uh, hibernating them inside because I wanted them to have that extra protection and not have to eat as much so you know we get minus 40 degrees Celsius here which is minus 40 Fahrenheit um, it's pretty extreme cold so what I'm going to do now is to prevent the water to seep in here. I'm just going to put a cover of this um, insulation, right? It's a metallic on one side and white on the other side. So I'm just going to put this over on top and make sure that I'm not going to plug up their aeration holes that I left on them. I'm going to go, go over afterwards to show you the aeration holes. I want it to like come and cover the hole to make sure it doesn't get, like if there's snow, it just flows over and it won't come up through the hole. What I did was I came and put this uh, insulation on top. It's not really for insulation because everything is really well insulated, but they have the air hole here. They still have the air hole here. And there is also ventilation back here. Can you see that hole right there? Let me try to get this lighter for you. Yeah, see the, there's a hole. They got plenty of heat now. So hopefully, hopefully it pays off. The holes are usually just a little bit higher to let the air come out, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. 
Worst case, they die. It's a nice, beautiful day. And they are completely covered in snow. And they do have a hole here where they have been peeping in and out. I just saw a bee come out. So it looks like they're nice and cozy. I see a little bit of dead bees here. They're cleaning up. But I saw one that was came out of the hole. So let me see if I can try to get a close-up on that. Hey, yeah, so. I, I bet they are very well insulated right now. Shoot, yeah. They are like more than well insulated right now they are kind of cozy i bet but it, it could be dangerous that that there will be too much snow for air to pass yeah so we're just gonna have to keep an eye on if we get a lot of snow in the next few weeks yeah i will have to come just maybe remove a little bit of snow from the front entrance here but i think i think it's all good